Hi, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Today I'm here to analyze, actually, Jupiter in Taurus for you. And uh, Jupiter going to ingress Taurus on May 16th. We're going to talk about the archetype of Taurus and the archetype of Jupiter over here to understand what kind of opportunities or challenges we will need to face during this year or period. Jupiter uh, takes about a year in each individual sign and uh, it goes around the zodiac sign about around in 12 years. So Jupiter actually is a very positive, optimistic planet. Jupiter is the planet of blessing, the planet of riches. Um, that is the planet of wealth and also higher education. Jupiter um, usually, you know, like it rules two signs. It rules daytime Sagittarius and at nighttime it rules Pisces. But those two signs, are very, very different from each other. Jupiter is truly optimistic in Sagittarius and very, very positive. Why? Because Sagittarius rules the ninth house. It is the sign of blessing and the most optimistic sign from all 12 signs, out of from all 12 signs. And it rules publishing, podcasting, broadcasting. Uh, it rules well. It rules higher education, long distance traveling. It rules foreign matters, religion. It rules everything to do with different culture, anthropology, anything to do with ethnics and belief system. But definitely it rules the riches as well and wealth as well. In the 12th house, in Pisces, it also rules spirituality mostly. It rules the unprivileged. It also rules addiction as well. But uh, it rules photography or filmography, uh, anything with working behind the scenes. It rules uh, actually uh, hidden enemies as well. It rules retirement, your dreams, your sleeps, uh, anything to do with with the cosmic wound, with karma. In, in Pisces, it is very, very deeply spiritual, while in Sagittarius, it's more to do with religion and belief system. Um, and uh, all right, so let's see um, uh, other thing about Jupiter. Jupiter in uh, Greek mythology, it's Zeus. It is the Greek god of uh, sky and thunder. And uh, he was actually son of Cronos, son of Saturn. And Saturn wanted to kill all of his children, but Jupiter the, was the one, the only one who, who uh, stayed alive. Um, so Jupiter doesn't do well in Capricorn because Capricorn ruled by Saturn. And um, uh, Jupiter, it's in fall over there, right? Because the father wanted to, to kill him as well. And, but Jupiter does very well in Cancer. It's exalted in Cancer. So it's representing over that more nurturing. It's, uh, it's uh, like a VIP. It's love to be nurtured um, in Cancer. And, you know, uh, Jupiter is in detriment, actually, in Virgo and in Gemini. It doesn't do well also in Virgo and Gemini. Um, so let's talk other thing about Jupiter. So Jupiter, let's talk about a little bit of tarot cards. So the Wheel of Fortune actually rules the, the planet of Jupiter and it is in numerology, it is the number of five. And it's also rules the Pentagon itself. So the witchcraft, because Pisces is witchcraft itself um, as well. Um, and in uh, medical astrology, Jupiter can rule the hip and also the liver. So, for example, Jupiterian herbs, anything to do with spirituality, like mugwort, which is lotus, blue lotus, which is opening up your third eye, and its connection with the divine, with the, divine, with the higher self. And um, otherwise, dandelion and milk crystal, which is good to detox and clean out your liver, that is also Jupiterian herb. So 
And especially because Jupiter is going to go to Taurus, and if you would like to, to actually incorporate some kind of herb during the year, dandelion would be amazing. I love dandelion. I love dandelion. I'm an herbalist also, a bit specialist. But listen to me, dandelion is the only flower which is representing in cosmology everything, like representing the sun, the flower itself, the, the, the yellow flower. And when it's blooming, you know, like not blooming, but when it's going to the sea, uh, that little white fluffy board, it's the moon. And when you blow it away, those little things, the seeds are the stars. So dandelion is an amazing herb and it's truly detoxifying. It's truly helping you, your liver and, and even the blood flow as well through that detoxification. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to go forward. So in Tarot card, that is the deal of fortune, right? Because it's positive. It's blessing in our life. And um, then let's talk about a little bit gemstones because uh, Jupiter was travels. And even in 12th house, it's rules travels because it's overseas travels or something to do with island. I always have uh, Hawaii in my brain because, you know, I mean, we are travelers with my family and we traveled a lot of countries, you know, or passport always up to date. But but uh, I I really, I really love Hawaii because we were island hopping over there for months and I truly loved it. So yes, uh, it rules islands as well. Um, all right, so it's rules traveling, but the gemstones of Jupiter is lapis lazuli because Jupiter married with Juno on a stone of lapis lazuli. And lapis lazuli actually is uh, the stone of uh, the higher self. So when I have lapis lazuli on, it's always like I, I can go deeper in meditation. I'm a Silva method graduate and multiple times. And uh, I really like to have lapis on me while I'm meditating. Sometimes I put that on my third eye and I lay down and, you know, it's it's giving me amazing ideas or sometimes even divine dreams when I have that during night on me, any kind of uh, gemstones. It truly helps me. Sometimes I put that under my pillow with amethyst and also moldavite because it helps you dream. All right. So then we're going to talk about uh, what else did I put over here? Yes, you know what, uh, Jupiter and uh, herbs, also the blue lotus, it's opening up your uh, third eye and magbert as well. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about Taurus. So Taurus is a fixed earth sign. Jupiter, rules Sedge, and Pisces, both of them are mutable. They are capable to bend their boundaries. They are, uh, you know, like, like uh, they have no boundaries. Uh, but a fixed earth sign like Taurus has a lot of boundaries down to earth, very hard for Taurus to change. So, so it's difficult, right? Um, and uh, Taurus is masculine, but, uh, but uh, it's ruled by Venus and Venus is feminine. Jupiter actually is a masculine and positive planet. So in Taurus, it's grounded. It's, it's not capable to move that fast like in Sagittarius, you know, like, okay, without thinking we can go and let's go like gypsies, just backpacking. Jupiter in Sagittarius for me, it's like a gypsy or, you know, a backpacking young kid who is traveling around Europe and, you know, they are hitchhiking. That's what we did, at least back in the 90s somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. All right. Uh, so that's what it represents in Jupiter uh, in, in Sagittarius. But in Taurus, it's more considerate. It's more like fixed. It, it doesn't necessarily like long distance traveling. It's going to travel, but, you know, it's going to be like an old man who has to have comfort, luxury to travel. So Jupiter in Taurus is still traveling, but, but it is with, with definitely with comfort. Uh, doesn't like discomfort and not ten or you know like okay let's have a beautiful photo let's have my breakfast over there because I am not going to go to to make my my tea or my food during on campfire usually Jupiter loves that in Sagittarius but in Taurus says no I need comfort here 
So yes, so that is a, a fixed sign. And you know, Taurus rules the second house. Second house is in the financial axis. Uh, it has, has to do everything with your values, with your gift, with your taste, with your food, the food what you eat. Um, it has to do anything with your possession, material possession. It has to do anything with um, with your wealth, the money what you earn with your hard work. So anything, the sweat what you put in, it has to do something with your garden, with your forest, with your farms. Taurus rules farms and livestock as well. But Taurus is because ruled by Venus. So it's also very, very artsy. And Venus not only love and beauty and, and uh, uh, fertility and uh, seduction, but also money and currency. So actually in Taurus, in the second house, which is that, uh, it rules possession, it rules currency. Jupiter going into Taurus, going to expand because the Jupiter planet of Jupiter is still expanding. It's never stopped growing. So it's expand everything where it's going to ingress. In Taurus, it's going to ingress, um, uh, actually expand wealth. For example, we're going to have a lot more farms. Um, so the way we are actually going to to um, produce or food is going to become different. It's going to be more luxurious and it's going to be plenty. For example, for some, something, um, it's going to be more factory farming perhaps um, because it's roots by, you know, like uh, that it's roots there. So we're going to put money into actually uh, farming and in food industry. So, you know, over here, I put a few things, which is very obvious. So it's rules that and jewelry is as well, material possession. So it's going to make us to invest or cash actually in something which is valuable and it's actually going to preserve your money. It could be anything with diamond, anything with jewelries, expensive watches, it could be like you're going to buy lands and it doesn't have to be necessarily undeveloped lands because Saturn rules undeveloped land, but Taurus rules more like farming. It's something already owning or, or you know, like where you can produce uh, the food, where you can grow food, for example. A lot of people are going to have garden and we're going to get back to gardening. Like, for example, in America, we have lawns all over and, you know, it's not used at all. But right now, during this period, we will actually value the, the, grow, the own, what you are growing on your own and teaching your children how to grow food. It's going to be very, very important. Think green. Taurus is green. Uh, Jupiter in Taurus is going to be like, we're going to pay attention on recycling or the carbon footprint, green footprint, like cleaning up oceans, cleaning up the earth, doing some kind of recycling project. It's going to be something like, you know, like, like um, some kind of invention, how to uh, get rid of plastic, for example. Traveling is going to be comfortable, as I said. It's still going to be like, all right, people are going to travel, opening up the borders, but it's going to be more comfortable and luxurious. Um, you know, probably be going to, and, and maybe even more earthy travel. So not necessarily a lot of travel by airplane, but maybe people are going to use more, most, mostly cars or, or, you know, trains or, or different way of traveling, uh, not necessarily air uh, indicated travels here. Uh, then, um, you know, like we can invest actually in gold, gold bars, uh, and, you know, we, everything is going to be around food. So what is going to change? It's going to be earthy. A lot of people are going to be uh, going to like, even if you're drinking wine, those kind of earthy flavor kind of wines. And, and you know, definitely food going to be center of attention. How to prepare how to cook a lot of people are going to 
value uh, cooking at home and inviting people at home. So, you know, that could be really beneficial for all of us. And then spirituality, going to be grounded. So, you know, Jupiter is spirituality. It is to do anything, in, even in the 12th house and religion in the ninth house. But somehow in Taurus, it's going to be very grounded. Um, so it's going to be like we have to practice spirituality, but oh, through yoga, through connected with earth, through gardening. Uh, so it's going to be more like I want to hands on spirituality. It's it's uh, something with, I, I always think of Avatar, the movie of Avatar, you know, when they were sitting uh, actually besides uh, the tree of Aya and, and they got connected with the roots and they needed that kind of grounding from the nature and spirituality going to get grounded and have a different kind of level here. So definitely hands-on. Um, I don't know, maybe be going to, to want to actually have more proof of the gaps and, and it, it, yeah. Or maybe we're going to go back to, to phrase the nature, like, okay, so, you know, right, right now we humanize uh, that, unfortunately, and uh, we don't think like it's, it's actually a collective knowledge, it's a collective spiritual energy. But right now, during Taurus, uh, um, Jupiter in Taurus season, we might going to give more emphasis on on the trees and and you know the the nature and and you know we're going to phrase the stars and 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 the trees and the rivers and you know that kind of spirituality could go on during this period of time. All right. So what else did I not talk about that? So definitely it's going to be really good for investment and or material possessions. Actually, it's not going to be investment. We're going to move away from bank. We're going to bypass banks. And I told you in the previous video, if you checked out the Scorpio lunar eclipse, because it's going to unfold the following half year, right? And minimum the following half year. And over there, I was talking about who we're going to bypass banks because we're going to have a lot of criminals who are going to steal identity or steal your bank account or your, your cryptocurrency, things like that. And you want to do actually invest in something what is tangible. So that's why we're going to get really earthy. And, you know, Taurus doesn't believe. Taurus likes to smell, taste, touch. Taurus believes in whatever he sees or touches or smells. So, you know, it has to be tangible for them. Okay, so right now I'm going to talk about each individual science over here. And, you know, areas I'm going to start with you guys. And you were really lucky last year because it's affected either your moon, the sun, or rising sun, Jupiter. And Jupiter is a blessing, right? But if you have, uh, by elements, actually, I wanted to talk about that. So if you have a Capricorn uh, stellium or sun moon rising or Virgo sun moon rising or a stellium in Virgo, Jupiter by elements going to trine with your sign. And also who else is really lucky by that besides Taurus is. If you have any sun moon rising in Taurus, you are the blessed for the year. You are the king of the year. Um, but also if you have Pisces or if you have cancer, then it's going to sextile with your sign. And you are also blessed. You are also fortunate during this uh, transit, Jupiter transit in Taurus. Okay, so if you are Aries, then it's going to move to your second house. And second house rules Taurus. It's everything to do your, with your material possession, with the money that you earn. So most likely, you will have a new earning opportunity. Most likely, you will get something uh, from loved one or, you know, from anywhere, actually. 
and it could be a big piece of art which values uh, really, really go up, or it could be a beautiful jewelry during the years, or you might go in to invest in a land or buy a farm, which is also increasing your wealth because Jupiter is increasing your wealth. So you are one lucky sign areas over here also because it's going to go to your best uh, sphere. And, you know, you might go in to find out you're getting new talent, something, a gift, but you didn't know about, you didn't know you can actually um, um, have some kind of understanding of financial matters or whatever it is. And then or some artsy, like you're going to start to paint and people, it's going to be well received by people. And you are capable to sell your painting and increase your wealth through that. All right. Then if you are a Taurus rising sun or moon, it's going to go to your first house, right? First house is anything to do the way you are representing yourself to, to society. The way you are representing your company and your business, uh, that is your self-worth. That is your self-image. So during this time, you're going to be really positive. And you, you will feel blessed. You will feel rich. You will feel like opportunities and, and, and very, very positive during this year. You know, also Jupiter is gaining. So some of you Taurus will have to be careful not to gain weight. But it could actually indicate pregnancies as well. So I remember once when I had Jupiter in the first, I get pregnant. And yes, it could indicate pregnancy. But definitely you, your vitality is going to be blessed. So your energy level is going to be more. And your Taurus is definitely going to feel expensive and worthy. So finally, it's time, actually, it's time for you to feel worthy um, as well. If you are Gemini, Gemini, that's going to go to your 12th house. And 12th house, Jupiter rules the 12th house. And that's the uh, ancient avatar of the 12th house of Pisces, right? So it's loves to be here. It's familiar here. It's actually some of you going to get retired. I'm going to be really happy with that. Some of you going to, to take care of your mental health or invest actually in, in um, a retreat center or you can invest, you can become a spy or you can actually build a, a, an addiction center or something with unprivileged. So you can, you can get into hotel industry, buy a hotel or you are capable to profit from or BNB or Bias Island, for example, some of the Gemini. So it could be really good for that. But also um, it indicates like you're going to be more um, um, grounded this year. And um, yes, you're going to be more grounded this year, definitely. And it could also indicate like you're going to take care of your liver or take care of an addiction and obsession. You're going to find the right uh, psychologist, the right shrink for yourself, and you go and you can get rid of an addiction, and you have a foundation to get rid of them. If you are cancer rising sun and moon, or if you have stellium in cancer, then it's going to happen in your eleventh house. Eleventh house has to do everything with uh, your collaboration, your goals, your dreams, your your luck. That is the house of luck, actually. And it's also to do with something humanitarianism, uh, fellowship, that is your social tribe, that's your friendship zone. And it's also a justice system as well. So in the 11th post, it could be like, uh, if you've been sued or if you're suing someone, you can get benefit out from that. Or uh, you can get actually bonus or uh, um, from your career. You can also get promoted as well. Your social tribe going to um, gain and actually you're going to have more friends. It's indicating more friends and those friends going to be down to earth. Um, you're going to be have a lot of lot more meeting in person because, you know, fixed Taurus sign, tangible, 
uh, it's gonna be in person, not a social media type uh, over there, but most likely a gardening uh, type or something like that. Yes, it's very, very positive for your cancers. You can win something. Uh, all right, Leos, it's going to be in your 10th house for a year if you have Leo, moon, sun, and rising. So my sun has moon and rising, and I have my moon over there. So it's in your 10th house of career. That's your mastery, your achievement. That has to do anything with your social image. It has to do everything with your ambition, right? It has to do anything with, with your purpose. Uh, so over here uh, and career, that is the red carpet stage. You get the center of attention. Your career going to bloom. You can get an amazing, auspicious, beneficial career, which is going to drastically increase your wealth. You, your social image going to change. Uh, you're going to be well received by the public. You can be actually famous overnight. So, or during that year, you can you can get famous uh, as well. Uh, you can get into universities or or the job that you were dreaming, career that you were dreaming of, uh, like like truly. And it's it's very good for you guys, uh, career wise, Leos. Okay, if you are Virgo rising sun or moon, or if you have Virgo uh, stellium, it's going to happen in your ninth house. Ninth house, also Jupiter rules ninth house as well, as I said. So what's going to happen over here? Anything to do with traveling. And it's trining your sign. So it's an extra auspicious, beneficial flavor here for you. So what's going to happen here? So you're going to travel maybe more. You, you're going to start a higher education. You might going to publish a book or podcast, broadcast, and, and you're going to become famous through that. You're going to have a new belief system, something what is, is going to grounding you. You're going to practice spirituality, but it's going to be really grounding and it's going to give you ease. So that's very, very beneficial. Jupiter in ninth house could indicate a second marriage for some of you. It could be someone from abroad. So you can go actually start to teach abroad or, or you know, even just through podcasting, podcasting, but you're going to have a lot of foreigners who are listening to your YouTube channel or things like that. That's definitely could be that. Mm, very, very beneficial for Virgo rising here. All right, let's see Libras, 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 you're going to have that in your eighth house. So Jupiter is a beneficial uh, planet, but in eighth house and, and actually in sixth house, not necessarily always indicating positive things. So eighth house, unfortunately, it could create inheritance and inheritance comes with a loss, right? So, so yes, it could indicate a loss for some of you. But it could be a trust or it could be like you're going to do your prenup and it's going to be beneficial for you. It could bring in an insurance money or through medical malpractice, some kind of injustice what's happened before you, before with you, and it's bringing a big amount of money. Eight house is a big, big amount of money. It's shared resources. It could indicate like maybe you divorced and your husband or wife didn't want to pay you, but right now this is the time then they're going to actually pay you and it's going to indicate a lot of money for uh, you Libras. Um, yes, insurance money um, and, and very, very deep understanding of the underworld and of banking and everything. So you might go into invest energy to study about that or become a mortgage broker or, or an insurance agent, something like that could be as well. But it could become like you gonna some of you going to become a surgeon and doctorate from there. All right. Uh, or a detective, private detective. All right, let's go to Scorpio. Scorpio, so it's gonna happen in your seventh house. So your love life is blessed. Your your partnership is blessed and legal matters as well. Seventh house, everything to do with your significant other. Maybe your significant other going to become famous and gonna bring a lot of money in. It could be some some kind of gain through a significant other or business partnership or or some kind of legal matters for you, Scorpio. So 
So that's definitely beneficial. You don't have to work for it. Someone else has to work for it. Um, yes, but definitely, please, it could indicate some of you going to get engaged or it could bring in a, a marriage partner for some of you. So definitely, it's a blessing here. You can renew your books. Um, you can uh, have a business partner and uh, and actually buy a land with someone else. Uh, but definitely not by yourself. It's with someone else. You're bringing in a partnership here. And it's positive. It's they want to help you. Um, yes. Okay. So if you are Sagittarius, rising sun or moon, or if you have a stellium in Sagittarius, so I'm a Sag rising, it's going to happen in your sixth house. Sixth house is anything with, to do with tenancy anything to do with tenants, so with, with your pet. So you might go into adopt a pet, a small dog or, or small pets. Uh, it could indicate also, like either you're going to buy rental properties or you are renting out something which is beautiful and loving and, and you will feel very rich and good and optimistic over that. Uh, six house also your, your, not for your, but your job. So you go into this land with job but it's good because it's increasing your money. It's really, really positive over there. Uh, it could also indicate like your health. You're going to focus on your health. If you need to lose weight, actually Jupiter in the six could be a little bit difficult to lose weight, but definitely you're going to pay attention and, and feel luxurious and you're going to put and invest in your health. So you can have a new membership in the gym or yoga studio, or, you know, you might going to get that job in like a nutritionist yoga studio or yoga teacher or something with retreat. Definitely it's there for you. Something with obligation, something with serving the public. It would be really, really beneficial. If you have your own company, you, this is the time when you can hire a lot of people because you won't be able to do that on your own anymore and you will need to hire people. So that's also beneficial for them. All right. If you have a cap rising sun or moon or a stallion in Capricorn, it's going to happen in your fifth house. Fifth house is joy, romance, anything to do with entertainment, with your children, with your creativity anything to do with sexual relationship, with games, with winning prizes, lottery, with winning and with your hobbies as well. So Jupiter over here, it's a blessing with your children. Um, it's You will be proud of your children. Your children could win something uh, like in a sport game or uh, they can get well in entertainment business. You can buy a record label studio or, or a sport club. It could be something with, with uh, you going to invite a romantic partner in. You might going to have a lover. Uh, definitely more romance and more joy in your life. And, you know, you are Capricorn. You're ruled by Saturn. You not always know how to enjoy life. And Jupiter over here going to make you to enjoy life, make you to have fun, make you to have joy. Your creativity going to take off. You're going to be like, wow, where is those ideas coming from? So that's going to be really, really beneficial for you. All right, Aquarius, let's see where is it going to happen. It's going to happen in your fourth house. Let me drink a little bit. Mm, I love cooking. So Aquarius uh, in your fourth house. Fourth house actually has to do anything with your family, with your living situation with with your with your real estate with your home but the fourth house also your roots your ancestors it's also representing ending as well and funerals and it is your foundation as well so fourth house um it's representing some of you going to invest in real estate or it could be like buying or selling and profit from real estate, get a real estate license, your living situation going to be more luxurious and blessing. So you're going to find the, the dream home for yourself. You can renovate your home and it's going to be luxurious and comfortable. Don't forget Taurus ruled by Venus and uh, Venus is design. So yes, it could be like indicating something with, with design the home redesign or renovate or yes something like that 
it could actually expand your family. So you might go into adopt a child. Jupiter, you know, also rules legal matters as well. And um, and it could be like you're going to have a custody about a child or a parent figure, a parent figure coming in to living with you. And you're going to be the trustee and they are gonna live uh, with you. So that's definitely, or you're gonna get a house from a parent, for example. Um, yeah, it could indicate that one as well, but definitely better living situation and it's auspicious and welcoming and beautiful. Uh, some of you might going to find your biological parents if you didn't know who are they or, or you know, just find out something which is going to be really beneficial. Like, whoa, all right, I didn't know, you know, like my father is not my father, but somehow it's going to be positive. It's going to be positive for you guys. All right, Pisces, is going to happen in your third house. Third house is your neighborhood. It's your neighbors. It's a... Uh, anything to do with your siblings, younger siblings. So you might going to have better connection with your younger, younger siblings, more friends, really, really um, good supportive friendship could be aunt and uncle sources. So, so it could be something with your siblings, reconnection over there or meet your siblings again, if you haven't seen them for a while. It could indicate really, really new neighborhood, but beautiful, auspicious, positive. You're going to love it. Um, or it could actually indicate, because the third house is transportation, you might going to get a luxurious car. But it has to be big because Jupiter is big. And because Jupiter rules the ninth house, which is foreign, so it's going to be foreign to you. Okay, so wherever you live, it's going to be foreign to you. Um, but luxurious and big. Uh, and then it could be something with the publishing and writing project and uh, something to create a school if you do want to create a school. But even 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 do a, a children garden, something with with uh, gardening as well, or how to grow food or invest in that. Definitely, it could be auspicious. The definitely writing project or transportation, it's, it's really good. So you're going to do a lot of uh, domestic traveling during the years, not necessarily uh, like uh, long distance traveling or not necessarily, uh, but mostly domestic or short distance traveling could be that for you, Pisces, but very, very positive education. If you want to take a course, like, but it's not high education, it's a course. Uh, then it would be very well supportive, guys, okay? All right, so that is my intake on Jupiter in Taurus. I hope we will be blessed at least on one area, right, in our life. Um, please, you know the dream, algorithm, unfortunately, this is technology. It's only going to recognize me if you give me some love. I'm doing that for you and... and uh, just press the like button, share my videos with your friends and family and comment below. One comment, one thank you or anything. I want to know about you. I want to know how did it work out for you. And any kind of comment actually could help me to get recognized through the algorithm. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate your intention and, uh, and your attention as well and to being here with me and learning with me. Uh, I'm going to see you soon, and I promise I'm going to do the videos uh, way before, because in that case, you know, like, you can be prepared month before. All right, guys, thank you so much for your attention. See you soon. Bye for now.